Kept you waiting, huh? Well, I think it's time I finally talked about this game. Where you live out your meaningless life. Going to high school every day. Trying to make friends, but it never works. Talking to giant like teddy me? bears. Faux show. Teddy, would you please stop talking? But then trying to catch a serial killer who is targeting a small country town. And that's what Persona 4 is all about. But Ramses, didn't you already talk about this game? Well, yes, but also no. As that was Persona 4, the original version of this game. And that's a little old. So this time around, I thought we should make the experience a bit more golden. I try and try, but nothing comes out. As Persona 4 Golden was released on a dead console. As an updated version of Persona 4. That made everyone rush out to buy this damn brick. Not me though. Curse you. You swap. Like that one role-playing game? Final. How rude. But with this game recently out on Steam, I can finally play it. Why is it so yellow? I and it starts with you in a limo with this lovely lady. And oh god, his nose! A nose, nose! This is Eagle, who is sort of like a fortune teller, toying with our lives. <laughs> Coming? He asks us for our name. I do the usual. But most people call this guy Chad Yu. Which you will see why later on. It's time to do, do, do. It seems a terrible catastrophe is imminent. <laughs> we then wake up and see. Oh my god! Eagle! I thought those were just a myth! So it turns out Chad here is from the city, and due to his parents being the worst ever, is sent to live out in the country town of Inaba for one year with his uncle wow. Dojima. You're more handsome in person than in your photo. And his daughter Boy. Nanako. Ow! <laughs> you eventually grow to like them. Hey. Huh? You drop this. Oh my god! A goth girl! All this town needs is a milf and we're set! You coon. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, no, it's so big, no! So we head with Dojima to fill up on petrol after he almost runs over the attendant. I mean, that would have been a quick game with Dojima in jail for murder. I'm also reminded that this is a Japanese game. It's in the back to your left. You know which way's left? The side you don't hold your chopsticks in. I know. Jeez. So we arrive at his house, which is very quaint, and you slowly realize there's nothing to do here. Like you just go to work or school and come home to watch TV every night. Just like in real life. This is boring. At Juness, touch our products. Every day's great at your Juness. Every day's great at your Juness. Jeez, there's nothing for this girl to do. Literally, her favorite thing is going to a shopping chain. It's like your kid falling in love with Walmart. I love Juness. Well, after a weird fog dream, we wake up and head to school for our first day. <laughs> oh, damn, dude, are you okay? Wait, are we really just ignoring him? Gee. I wonder who the main characters are. So we get introduced by our teacher who really needs to see a dentist. You'd better not even think of getting involved with the girls here, let alone abusing them. Wait, what? I'm just here to study for the tests. So we sit down and meet our main characters. Green girl. Sheesh. Red girl. And a bleak looking student. Critical hit to the nads. But before any proper introductions, we hear a shocking announcement. Attention all students. There has been an incident inside the school district. What, did they run out of chicken tenders at the cafeteria or something? Well anyway, this is Yosuke, Yukiko and Chie, who are the main characters at the start. But I also have to point out there is something odd with her. Goosebumps! No, not that. I mean, since I played the original game first, she sounded like this. It was too small. That's pretty realistic. But you know, now... It pretty much keeps this town going. Why are you saying it like that? Seriously, it's so grating to hear this new voice for her. It actually started to get real suspicious. Like, I don't know, man, that's something an imposter would do. Sheesh. Anyway, the two girls decide to walk us home, and we find out that, yeah, there's really nothing to do in this dang town. Oh, finally, some action. So it turns out that the announcement from earlier was in relation to a body being discovered, brutally murdered, and our uncle is a detective investigating the case. So the next day, we learn that Yosuke is from the big city, and he welcomes us with a free steak. What about me, huh? No apologies? Jeez, Chie, you're really starting to get on my nerves. So after taking us to June's, which is where he works, and he fails to hit on a co-worker, Ugh. Madam, you wound me. Chie tells us about the Midnight Channel, a rumor that at midnight on a rainy day, your TV will turn on showing you something scary. 
I'm trying to remember the last time I heard something this stupid. But since this is high school, where the peer pressure is high, we try it out that night and get a little too into it. Well, turns out we all saw the same thing. I like the part where you got stuck because your TV was too small. <laughs> That's pretty realistic. Yeah, sure, Chie, you're a comedian. It was too small? If it had been bigger. Oh, yeah? So the gang heads to June's to buy Chie a new TV. However, Chad thought he heard his reflection calling him names and punches the TV. Now, normally you would pull your hand out after seeing this, but Chad, you, on the other hand... going on? Holy crap. I think this is all too much for my bladder. Are you gonna pee your pants? Ah, I can't hold it anymore. What? Guy half stuck in the teeth. Wait, wait, whoa! They find themselves trapped inside the TV and wandering around. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't that a reference to? Jeez. The group then find a room of posters of a TV actress whose husband's mistress was the one who was murdered. But this room is too much for Yosuke. My bladder's gonna explode! What are you doing? Piss my pants! Anyway, we head back to the start and see an ominous thing. What the heck is going on here? His name is Teddy and is annoyed we invaded his home, so he summons TVs and kicks us out. The next day at school, the group go to an assembly where they learn that Yosuke's co-worker was the one who discovered the body, but now was murdered as well, like the killer wanting to silence her. And if you never played the game before, it's such a great mood setter. Despite the weird antics, you now have two murders hanging over the town. This prompts Yosuke to try and figure out who the murderer is, because the police ain't gonna believe there's a TV world. So they go back in. This time I'm more prepared with Chie standing watch. <gasps> See? Well, they meet Teddy again and discover who is under that costume. Whoa! What a new. Teddy is also annoyed at the murders because it seems like the culprit is chucking people into the TVs, and after a while of them being trapped there, they die in the real world. And after some friendly banter, he gives us glasses which can help see through the fog, which reveals the shadows. No, not those. These are the enemies of the world, but it's a good thing an anime cutscene pops up as we summon our... This is our persona, a manifestation of the soul, which is perfect timing as we enter the room to see... Oh no, he's got yellow eyes! My eyes! So for everyone else, they have a shadow version, part of themselves they wanted to hide. So Shadow Yosuke tells them how he only wanted to enter this world for the adventure, to get rid of the boredom of living in this town, and not actually to avenge his friend. But Yosuke says the magic words, You're not me! which turns the shadow into a boss we have to defeat. Gee, making me do all the work. Once beaten, Yosuke accepts his faults and it becomes his persona. Teddy in turn becomes the group's navigator where he gives out useful hints in battle. Go, Sensei! It you knocked it down! Go, Sensei! Nice you knocked well, Teddy escorts us out and Chie is happy she didn't cause our early deaths. Yeah, I know you sabotage the rope. Ow! I hate you both! So the next day, we shake hands with Yosuke, oh god, I hate when that happens, and at night we learn that Yukiko is on the Midnight Channel, as yep, she's missing in the real world, with the police struggling to keep a hold of the situation. Is Yukiko-san inside that place? <laughs> Do people, uh, like Chie? Uh -huh. Well, this time we are more prepared, as Yosuke brought some weapons to save Yukiko. Kinda like this? Two suspicious young males found, one armed with multiple weapons, requesting immediate backup. Are you resisting an officer of the law? You're under arrest! Thankfully, our uncle lets us off with a warning, but on the way out, we bump into his assistant, Adachi, who honestly is trying his hardest to not actually work. Keep this between us, okay? We got a call from Miss Amagi's parents yesterday evening saying they couldn't find her anywhere. Whoa, you're helping us out? Gee, thanks, bro. Clearly they haven't learned their lesson because we then go to an actual weapons store to buy weapons. Sure you're okay with these kids here? And Chie wants to join. If you insist on coming, just make sure you have something to protect yourself. Will you guys shut up? And on the street, a magic blue door appears, a blinding flash of light, and we wake up in the velvet car. Do not be alarmed. No, 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 no. Contribution. To wait, 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 wait. So in this limo, we can upgrade our personas, as being a Chad means we get multiple of them. And, uh, oh, it's her. 
goth girl. Shut up. I'll get back to this group, uh, but we head back into the TV and reach a castle which seems to be where Yukiko is held by her shadow. Chie, however, runs ahead and finds her own one, who says how Chie was always jealous of Yukiko, causing her to say the magic words, and it turns into a boss which we defeat, letting Chie get her own persona for battle. And thus begins the dungeon crawling. It does take a while to get going in Persona games, so you run around these hallways finding monsters to attack to get an advantage in battle, but if they attack you... Oh god, run! Now it's turn-based where every party member gets a chance to defend, attack, or use their Personas to either do stat buffs, debuffs, or elemental attacks which use up SP. This can be refilled with limited items, but the main way is to actually leave the dungeon and sleep overnight at home. Because Persona works in a calendar system, meaning you have a set number of days to save that person trapped in the TV, otherwise the Fog rolls in and they die. And the moves are very beneficial since they target an enemy's weakness, knocking them down, and if all are knocked over, you get to do an all out attack. And at the end of battles, you get cards to pick. Wow, my gotcha rolls are insane today. They either give you buffs in the dungeon or. A new persona. Which, back at the Velvet Car, Eagle will fuse them together to get stronger ones. You will want to do this a lot, you don't want to hold on to the earlier ones, as you can then talk to Margaret to register them, meaning you can pay to summon the earlier ones later on. And Marie is there, where if you find skill cards, she will clone them for you and you can buy them back anytime to teach to a persona. Look, it's all very in depth if you want to get into it. But we breeze through the dungeon and make it to Shadow Yukiko, who hates that she has to inherit the Amagi in her family business. And it was at this inn where the first murder victim stayed at. She says the words, we get a boss battle, and we actually have to use some skill to win. Well, Yukiko accepts her shadow and joins the team, with Teddy real excited. So that's all well and good, but since we beat the dungeon early, the game makes us wait for her to recover before we can continue the story. Which means the other aspect of Persona, the daily high school life. Yes, where you do mostly random activities to increase your social links. You know the handshake thing from earlier? As Chad needs to have as many friends as he can get, and some characters form social links with him. Meaning if you spend time with them, you learn more about them but increase the social link. Which actually gives you boost to that Persona with that typing. So say if you rank up the Priestess Arc with Yukiko, you get boost to any persona you fuse in that category. It's just a way to help you improve your combat and your social skills or something. And in addition to this, you can level up your personality in five areas to even progress some links. Like you need some of it to talk to Dojima as he can't understand anything apart from Boomer talk. Ah yes, I, I too bought a house at 20. Uh, you can understand me now, right? <laughs> Or you can start a job which actually earns you money, like making envelopes, or taking care of kids. There seems to be a wide economy of jobs in Japan for high schoolers. Or on rainy days, you can attempt the Beef Bowl Challenge, which is an insane amount of meat. Whoa, it feels like I'm being sucked into the meat dimension. Oh no! Whoa, who are you? I am. Beat God, and for attempting this challenge, I bestow upon you this new power. Okay, bye. And with this power, Chad Yu is now invincible! And no matter the social link, he knows what to say to maximize the points gained. And you even know the correct answers for all the quizzes. Yes, this power has optimized his school life. Who can tell me the capital of Spain? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of a convoluted way of saying I downloaded a mod that uh, adds a lot of quality life improvements. What? Don't look at me like that! I know you Google the test answers anyway. This just speeds up the process! Wait, how did I get here? I will say the mod is really useful in other places as it has an improved quick travel feature, letting you teleport anywhere you want. Well, other social things, you get to pick between joining the drama or music club. So before in the original one, I joined the drama club. So this time I'll try the music club. I mean, I wasn't banned at school. It should be interesting. It was hard though knowing what to say for each social link though, because sometimes you just want to pick the meme answers. Oh, that actually worked. Well, anyway, back at home, you see that Nanako leads a sad life. I mean, the kid literally spends her weekends watching the Weather Channel, and she freaks out when her dad so much as mentions going on a family vacation. I mean, can you blame her? Their dream is never around. But one night he brought back a dachi for dinner. Hi there. Ow! 
Wow! I don't think that's going to help Nanako, man. But through the social links, he learned that his wife died in a car crash, and he struggled to take care of Nanako, but is trying his best while having to solve the murders. I also found it amusing that Adachi has his own social link, but he's just such a lazy policeman that he hides in June's pretending to work. Hi there! Well, you get another club to pick between, that being basketball or soccer, but it sort of becomes a group one with the three of you hanging out together. I pick soccer though. Soccer? Soccer? It's football. Say it right! The group is very chill to hang around with though. Hey man, have you heard about this YouTube channel where a small time streamer called Ramses plays games every week and uploads edited highlights on the same channel? It's so convenient to watch! Dude, no one cares about the streams you watch, okay? Streamers are so weird! Hey, aren't you the one going on and on about all the e-girl streams you watch? No and don't you ever mention that again! Jeez, okay dude. Anyway, remember the goth girl? Oh yeah? Well, Marie here wants you to take her around town since she doesn't really seem to understand how any of this works. Hey, why is it called steak anyway? It's short for steak. Steak? Turns out this Marie is actually quite the poet, although I hate you finding about it. Shut up, you stupid jerk. You get other supports too, like at this shrine. Holy moly, I thought that was a ghost. That wasn't as scary as I thought. Where a fox appears. Yay, I'm friends with a fox. Well, you have to fulfill its request by helping people around town, so they will think that the shrine did it and offer more money to the fox. And eventually the fox joins you in the TV world, healing you with magical herbs if you pay for it. Gee, what a capitalist. Anyway, Yukiko finally recovers and the group celebrate by eating food. Hey, could I try just a little bit of that? Just one tiny bite? Hands off the soba, pal. Go get your own if you want some. Okay, just one bite, got it? Do you want to try some? Ah! You ate ah! my fried tofu. I'll buy you steak. It'll be on me. Steak? Ooh, filet sounds nice and expensive. Filet, 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 filet. No, that's just a yuck. Oh well, steak. I guess food in Japan is really good, huh? Want some meal too? I'm touching, Everyone man. This dude is everywhere, and he really likes hanging out with us. Actually, he's kind of a cool guy. Always trying to help us out, even playing with Nanako when Dojima isn't there, and always worrying about us. He's turning into more of a bro than the actual bro character. Oh, yeah. So back into the TV where Teddy gives Yukiko her glasses. Y Yukiko? <laughs> How do I look? Here, Chie, your turn. How'd it come to this? Uh, Yukiko, are you okay? <laughs> well, it's now the Golden Week holidays, and Dojima had to cancel his vacation due to work. But don't worry, our friends pitch in to make Nanako not feel so lonely by taking her to Junes! Oh my god! I love Junes! Jeez, these kids are really gonna have bent necks later on. Midterm. Oh crap, there's actual tests oh, in this game? I thought I was just doing it as a joke! Maybe I should ask her for some private lessons. Hey, chill, Yosuke. You do seem to be great with your hands. Uh, uh, never mind. So now the game is kinda in a weird spot where you saved someone, but now the group doesn't really know what to do until the next Midnight Channel. I mean, after you save someone, it shows a shadowy figure in the fog. Man, I wish I brought a jacket. But you work out that all the victims were female, and they're sort of uh, linked together, with the second one finding the body, and Yukiko working at the inn where the first one stayed. But the game goes about now fleshing out the characters. What are you, scared of a little lightning? Quiet, you! I'd be a goner if even one of those things hit me. Well, back to the tests. Yep, the game has it. And apparently, getting good grades has benefits when interacting with people. Well, Chad is trying to be the social darling. So, oh boy, I've got to study like crazy. Just kidding, we have the meat dimension power. Whoa, this test is so easy. I mean, I literally know all the answers. Hey, wait a minute. When did we learn that? And I don't know the answer. Oh, no. Well, after the test, the group discusses the results in such a relatable way. I remember too well after a test in school. You ask the smartest person what the answer for that question, and they go, Oh yeah, I put this down. And you think, Oh crap, crap that's I not what wrong. I did. I put the rice cakes on top of the table. Well, back home, we see on TV a biker kid getting interviewed. 
Man, that blur sure is pointless. It's completely obvious who it is. Ah, yeah, totally. Nice Wait, who is that? And that night with the rain, that person is on TV. Wait, it's clearly him. How can you not tell? Is this like in Pokemon with Jesse and James with Ash never working out it's them? Did you see that? Oh, they know. Huh. What do you think about Yukiko and Chie? Which one's your type? Gonna take over someday. <laughs> Neither. And back at the June's food court, which the gang have decided is their super secret hideout. Yeah, all the Persona gangs really love talking about catching killers out in the open. <laughs> You're so funny, Chie! Shut up! <laughs> well, Kanji seemingly lives at the local textile shop, and the gang stake it out. Turns out he's meeting some kid who clearly doesn't see us hiding. The group split up to stalk them while we wait at the shop. It's you and me playing leapfrog. Man, this is weird. However, Kanji spots them and chases the two. Why are you running? And that night, we see Kanji's shadow on TV, like with Yukiko, meaning he's now been chucked into the TV by the killer. I'm your host, Kanji Tatsumi, serving you this scandalously special sneak in report. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what's going on. I want to see everything about you, Yuki chan. Oh, eh, eh. Nanaka also starts to call us Big Bro, even though we are technically her cousin. But who cares? We gotta do what we can to keep her happy. I still can't get over it. I mean, it's the weekend. Dojima, put on some cartoons. Don't let her watch the weather channel. Oh, uh, he's not here. Uh, hey, look, the test results are out! Well, I only got one wrong, so I should be super popular. Wait, what are my results? Game, hello? Y you, you made a big deal about it? Uh, hello? Well, into the TV we go, with the dungeon being a sauna. Oh god, what's with the chains? It's death! This the Reaper? Ah. Well, that was fun. Yikes! Also in the dungeons, you can find these hands, where defeating them give you either an insane amount of XP or money. But I'm trying so hard! Stop running, cowards! Also, a little nitpick, the game has this weird internet feature to call for help. They put it on the start button, with menu being triangle? And I just kept pressing it accidentally so many times, it's such a weird button choice. Well, anyway, we fight Kanji's shadow after he said the magic words, and was revealing his fear that he doesn't want to be rejected. And after the win, he gets his Persona and we grab him out of the TV, now having to wait many more days for him to recover. Well, I guess it's time for more socializing with her. Do you play a lot? Then you must be a playboy. Yeah, sure, whatever you're into. I also found it amusing how in most social links, you barely spend time with that character as other people just barge in to interact, which actually made it feel more interconnected with all the friends you have. But it was kind of awkward the way they did it. Like here I'm trying out Yukiko's horrible cooking and Nanako just randomly walks in, goes, hey, can I try it? No, it's bad food. Okay, bye. Seamless, huh? We also spend more time with Dojima. And our soccer buddy. Holy moly! Free cheese! And I love blue cheese! Cheese? I'm in! Well, Kanji finally returns to school. Uh, hi there! <laughs> He's not the brightest member of the group. So, uh, what, so someone's killing people with the TV? What, what, what is he, beating them to death? Oh, they weren't being beaten with a TV? Were you listening at all? So with Kanji being targeted, it ruins our earlier theory of the people being only connected to the first victim. But the new idea is that anyone who appears on TV is a target. As one was a TV actress, the schoolgirl was interviewed, so was Yukiko and Kanji, all before they disappeared. So it's literally just the killer flicking through the channels going, Oh cool, they're in my town. Into the TV you go. Well, we go back into the TV to get Kanji his glasses. It's kind of cute. M mind if I pet you? Can you see a pattern forming in this game? I also learned that you can redo old dungeons if you want, as they have bonus bosses for extra XP, and it was here I saw that you kind of want to prioritize the social links with party members, as they get boost in battle, like Chie and Yukiko pulling off this random move, then Chie helping out Kanji before her actual turn. Also while I'm here, yes, Persona 4 music is absolutely amazing. However, it was so annoying whenever it rained, as the game just wouldn't play any music. Some people might enjoy no music. I always hated it! But then we get back to the real world where Dojima gives Nanako... Coffee? Bro, why stop being a bad parrot? It has caffeine in it! Well, I guess that'll make things more interesting for you now, won't it? Yosuke also... 
I don't know, started to get really horny. Oh yeah? Like he has this plan to get a motorbike license to try and pick up girls. The pheromones dripping off of us will bring them around in no time. Jeez, I forgot how guys talked in high school. Well, we get our license, and Dojima gives us his old bike which he had when he was a Hellraiser <laughs> back in school, and now we can ride to other cities where we can watch movies and drink coffee. And now Yosuke initiates his plan to try and get a girl with the scooter, but it doesn't really work Wait! out. <laughs> and now on the weekend, the school has a camping trip and the girls want to cook the group a meal, so they ask us to help buy the ingredients the night before. Carrots, potatoes, a radish is the same as turnips, chili peppers, it's not curry if it isn't spicy. How about some kimchi too? Chocolate? I got uh, a bad coffee? feeling in the pit Yogurt? of me stomach. Wait, How Chie loves mint chocolate. chocolate. I love mint, mint chocolate. chocolate. Damn, okay, Chie, despite me being suspicious of you earlier, you know what? I'm warming up to you. You got great taste. The one I'm actually worried about is this dude. Because seriously, ever since Kanji joined the team, he acts like a completely different character with his horniness. Well, anyway, the girls make the amazing food during the camp. <laughs> Oh no. So no food, and in the girl's tent, they can't sleep because of the snoring. Do you think she'd stop snoring if I covered her nose and mouth? No, 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 Yukiko, no! Meanwhile at our tent, Kanji is there, and Yosuke is worried what will happen at night, so kicks Kanji out, and then the girls sneak in here to get away from the snoring, and you're totally okay with it? Yeah, that's it, you're out of the starting lineup. Well, the next day, they find a waterfall where Yosuke wants the girls to swim with him to make up for the bad food. Ta-da! I've got you covered. Pretty swanky, huh? Dude, that's just wrong. That's it, you're out of the team. Oh wait, I already did that. Those girls might be childish on the inside, but I bet they're gonna turn into some fine looking women before too long. Yosuke, they are right there. Why are you so horny? Well, they changed because, I mean, they did almost kill us. What? Man, I'm getting too old for this. So the girls push them in, and it turns out pushing them into a river with extreme frozen temperatures caused extreme hypothermia. And the teacher with his hangover throwing up alcohol upstream meant all of that and the stomach acids mix into the river, infecting the three. And only the fox's magical herbs could heal them up. Gee, Persona 4 Golden is such a wild game, I swear. Anyway, we go back home, all safe and sound, but we see a new character on TV. Oh my god! Psych the E-Girl! To be honest, I'm a fan too. She's such a pie! So Persona 4 Golden is a weird game. I mean, you have this Chad high schooler moving to a country town, making friends with everyone, and you think, aha, this is such a fun high school simulator game. Going to school with the calendar system, studying for tests, fishing in the local decontaminated river. Oh no. Yes, very wholesome, peaceful stuff. What? Oh, the serial killer? What about them? Catch them? Wh wh why me? I mean, just because we have super powerful personas doesn't mean I have to. With great power comes great responsibility. Fine, I'll catch criminals. Responsibly. So yes, there's a killer in town, and our group have the power to enter the TV world to try and stop them, as seemingly every victim appeared on TV just before they were chucked in and killed. Well, okay, who's on TV this month? My health isn't Oh no. We must protect the eagle! A cutie pie? So as she was seen on TV, Rise might be on the Midnight Channel, and yep, there she is. That was Rise for sure! Rise Kujikawa! I... I guess I should be so excited. Yeah, even though a celebrity is in town, you shouldn't be happy. She could be killed. Dude, my heart's pounding already. Dude, why are you like this? Her posture, even her beautiful slim legs. Well, we go to her grandmother's tofu shop to see if she's home, but it's like everyone has heard about the idol coming to town. So there's a police presence, which is just Dojima and Adachi. Ay, ay, ay. What are you all doing here? Hmm. Well, who wouldn't want to come check it out if they found out an idol's family ran an ordinary tofu store? Huh, just answering what I said. It's almost like our silent protagonist's voice doesn't matter much in this game. Anywho, I'm a, a big fan. We finally go inside and see Rise, who wants to give up the idol job and return to here to live the quiet life because she sounds so depressed about it all. I mean, it's almost like the people you see online and idolize aren't like that normally.
Not me though, I'm always crazy. I'm so glad I came. Oh yeah? Dojima, ever the policeman, questions us as to why we visited Rise. I swear, I know nothing about the murders. I just asked for the autograph and her socks. Something smells here. Jeez, why do I come up with all these jokes? You're funny. So the gang meets up at the super special secret hideout to discuss how they're gonna find the killer who is definitely targeting Rise. So maybe we should stake out her shop. Yes, these high schoolers have nothing better to do. You gotta go with donuts and milk. What the hell? You don't need that on a stakeout. You ain't American Santa Claus. Throw in some disposable diapers. Oh. Too much information! I gotta miss my pants! However, Adachi appears and we're like, Oh, he's a good guy, let's ask him to help! And we all just stand around twiddling our thumbs until... Uh, who's there? Oh my goodness, we found the killer! Quick, let's catch him! Wait, no, game, don't block my view with this truck! Ugh, anyway, they tackle the dude, but he claims he's just a creepy fan who wanted to take pictures of Rise without her makeup that would sell for millions online. It's not a crime in this country to take secret pictures! Wait. Really? Let me see. Huh. Why is this such a big search topic? Anyway, that's his story, but Adachi arrests him for the murders. And that's it? The game's over? Okay. Trojan, Ramses, Magnum, Sheik! Hang on. Rise Shadow is still on TV! Well, guess that means Adachi arrested the wrong person, and the killer is still out there. So we head to Teddy to ask if he has spotted anything suspicious. I was so sad that my chest would burst and cotton would fly out. Can I try scoring with you two someday? I mean, when you're down bad, you really are down bad. So he's sad he doesn't remember who or what he is, which is just very... Similar. Similar. And eventually we find Rise Shadow in this very bright place. Rip. Ha ha ha, I know what that is. It's the thing zebras have, right? Doesn't anyone get the joke? Okay, let's try one more time. Drip. It's something zebras have. Can anyone shut this thing up? So into the dungeon we go, which is very pink. And also I started to like the shuffle time here a lot, as some cards let you pick again. Now to balance this, they do have some cards that lower your XP or money. But if you tank it and collect all the cards, you get a sweet bonus, which guarantees a shuffle time the next fight, with more turns for you to pick all the cards, meaning you can continuously get them in a row. So I was grabbing so many personas, I couldn't hold them all. Well, here you go, Igor. Victims for you to sacrifice. Not be alarmed. I have a thick climax. God, there's something just so soothing about seeing these higher level personas get fused together. Also in the dungeons, the enemies whipped out this status effect which turned the party old. Yes, old, I couldn't believe it until I heard this. What was I gonna do? So we make it to Shadow Rise, who is confronting the real one, who is also Stop very it. sad. And she says the magic words, turning the shadow into the boss. And this fight was kinda like, uh... But due to plot convenience, we aren't able to win. And all looks lost until Teddy, worried he might lose his only friends and the only customers for his glasses shop, saves the day. Roar! Teddy! And Shadow Rise is defeated, leaving Teddy very flat. Hope that was fun, Ted. However, this isn't the end as Teddy's shadow question mark appears. And holy moly, is it scary. The truth is unattainable. But after we defeated, Teddy and Rise both gain their personas, with Rise now taking over their navigating, as Teddy joins the party, now happy he finds meaning to protect his new friends. So, a lot happened. And now we got two more to the party. And also, Woo, I'm home. What? Already? Well, time to wait for Rise to recover, which means more days of grinding them social links. And we have a new one with I, who tells you to skip class. Yeah, sure, okay, why the heck not? And she's like a stuck-up rich girl who looks down on everyone. Needless to say, Chad really likes that. However, no one can top the one and only got they Wait, where is she? And she left a poem? Here I am. I am the little mermaid. Gee, kinda all over the place there. How about another? You are a murderer. My last words. The Little Mermaid. Yeah, she's still my favorite, okay? Also, there was another link I started, which first had me getting a job in the hospital. At night! Oh man, this isn't worth the less than minimum wage. And you meet a nurse who is... Oh, you're cute. Ah, uh, it's kind. Excuse me! I'll show you something fun the next time you're here. <laughs> I'll see you again. No, you won't. It's kind of like, yikes for a bit, but I can guarantee you it gets okay later. All right, please trust me. It's like I tell people to keep watching the Steins Gate anime up till episode 12 because it really gets good after that.
Yeah. Also, death is everywhere. Just standing there. And you eventually learns how to fish, which made me realize how tedious Persona 4 can be with these activities. It's like one of those old games where you have to click on everything to even unlock the next thing and hope one thing leads to another. There were so many steps just to be able to fish. But it does have a nice charm to it, like I wanted to fuse Personas and check in the forecast. It said to do it on the next day. So I go at night and oh, okay, I can start Margaret's social link now. Which, by the way, I'm never completing. I mean, she wants me to bring her specific Personas? Right. I just click on whatever gives me the biggest numbers. Anyway, we run down the days and suddenly, a cutscene? Oh no, another victim? And this time it's... Wait, the homeroom teacher? With the funny teeth? Oh no, not him, he was my favorite character. The body was found in the same manner as the second, so even though we saved Rise by the deadline, another victim has turned up. What on earth is going on here? So the gang head back to June's to talk with Teddy about all this, but it seems like someone is already here. Whoa! He's here! Grandma. Oh, Teddy in the real world? So Teddy was bored and just waltzed here because he felt like it. But don't worry, everyone thinks he's the June's mascot. Which doesn't help when he stands up during our super secret hideout meetings. It's too hot! I can't stand it! And without warning, he pops off his head, revealing a blonde kid. Whoa, white guy! Well, that's unexpected. Uh... Yeah, I don't know how this makes sense, the game barely knows, but here he is. He got a human form with no clothes. So Chie buys him clothes on Yosuke's account. What?! You put it on my account?! Karma, karma. And we go to check up on Rise, but seems like someone else has beaten us there. Ah, uh, I had a feeling you'd come. Excuse me? So it's that detective boy from earlier doing their own sleuthing, having already worked out that all the victims were shown on TV before their death. Which is odd though, because the teacher never appeared on TV, making it very confusing. Well anyway, is all fine now. I really appreciate what you did for me. E-girl mode activate. Thank you so I love you guys! No one asked. So the game kind of treats the teacher's death as a joke, with the gang still calling him by his nickname, King Moron, and then a new teacher is just swiftly brought in and... Oh no. Ugh, finals are next week. And as we stress about the school exams, now a toe that detective drops by. Your game will soon reach its end. Hey, I'm only 30 hours in, and how long to beat says the game is 60 hours. They casually mention that the police have a suspect and that it's a high schooler from another school. Which means the kids can actually now focus on their exams by studying together, which I always hated. Anytime in a group, I would be the one who would distract everyone by showing them Facebook memes. Yes, they were really funny back then. Okay, get off my case. Well, the exam flies by and they complain about the test. What do I need to know English for? I can always ask for a translator. Do, do you know what language you're speaking right now? Sex? You, on the other hand, finally got into the top 10. Let's go! I'm so smart! This was definitely not due to any god-given power we received. Oh damn, you're actually reusing me even though you only planned me for one joke. Anyway, now it's a summer break, and Yosuke decides that they should plan to ride their bikes to the beach. I'll get to see Reset herself in a swimsuit with my own two eyes? Can you maybe not talk about her like she's not here? Thank you for saying that, Chie. Me juices. Ew. But that's not for another month, so let's go back to June's to grind in the dungeon. Where Rise actually helps out way more than Teddy, and it all seems fine until the next rainy night, where a new person appears on the channel. Oh, it's... Uh, oh, I may have forgotten to mention that earlier. So, uh, way back, this dude from another high school creepily tried to ask Yukiko out. She said no, and we never heard about him again until now. And this dude is like, catch me if you can. And the group believes he might actually be the killer, since he is from another high school. Also, I mean, look at those eyes. They clearly seem like a villain in any game. Well, we need more info on him, and oh, look, it's our good friend Adachi. I swear, he really has a loose mouth as he constantly tells us in information classified from the police. Don't worry bro, I won't tell Dojima. Well, the killer's name is Mitsuo Kubo, and his dungeon is a video game? What is this? Some kind of game? Where the music is retro remixes, and very dungeon-like where stepping on a tile jump scares you. Chie-senpai, your help- 
But why though? And I found so many of these hands that give so much experience, I swear if you ever see them in dungeons, it makes it all worthwhile! And I realized you can find your benched party just chilling in the dungeon. But why though? And GA learned a new move! Ready to go! We eventually find Kubo and his shadow, both confused as to why we are here, but he happily confesses that he is the killer, and we fight his shadow, the boss baby? Boss baby? Boss baby! But why though? Well, we win and pull him out of the TV, handing Kubo to the police, and I, I, I guess that's it! We got the killer! Time for relaxation! Kinda weird there's no big celebration, but okay, sure. Alrighty, um, well, Nanako seems a bit bored home alone. Yeah, the weather channel can only be funny every John's once in a while. The moisture from John. So we all decide to go over and make her a dish. Omelette with rice. Did you already forget the tragedy of the school camp out? Well, we already told you that was an accident! She's right. We just got a couple of the ingredients wrong. Chocolate. We just got a couple uh, of the coffee. ingredients wrong. I heard last time you choked down something so awful that words couldn't describe it. It was horrible. You poor dears. Who would do such a horrible thing? Well, we cook. And the gang tries out the girl's food. How do I put this? It tastes really... Um... Boneless? And they all are horrible except for ours. I... <laughs> Gee, I'm sure glad I picked her as my favorite, am I right? Well, okay, more socializing time. As I started to get higher ranks with I, and found out you can actually stuff up her link with a wrong answer, which reverses it, essentially meaning you now have to waste a day trying to ask her to forgive you. Ah, yes, because my expression was high, she forgave me. That's just how it works in real life. Then I had to make the big decision. Who do I give my free time? Between these two? Oh god, who do I pick? They are both emotionally unstable. However, I did learn that Marie's social link featured the group a whole lot, which was a bad idea in oh. front of this Terminator. She just really hates me talking to other people, huh? Shut up! Also, it was kind of funny how the music is so abrupt when it switches to a new track to fit the mood. Like it's all happy. Then oh god, here come the feels! Marie also had some more poems that were placed by someone in the limo who keeps wanting us to read them. Hmm, must be Igor. Spicy mint tea. Twilight creeps up on us. It's actually so chill spending time with her, but seriously, gang, can we have a little privacy? Want me to get rid of them? Uh, uh, what? This program was brought to you by the following sponsors. Um, uh, well, we also get rank 10 with Chie, which in Persona terms, if it's a girl social link, you will have the option of making them your girlfriend or friend zoning. And honestly, I really like Chie recently. I warmed up oh, to her. and it's new, so it's clean. It makes a matching pair with mine. <laughs> but I do think it would ruin the group dynamic if Chad and her dated, and even Yukiko, so let's stay friends with both of them. This also maxes out their personas, causing them to evolve. And now Chie was seriously so broken in the game. I mean, she has two lightsabers. This is getting out of hand. So yeah, they are good friends. Marie, on the other hand, the ho ho! Don't tell me the two of you are on a date! Yes, that's right, I'm exclusive with Marie. And this is not foreshadowing or anything, okay? Marie's social link also focused on her memories. As a Velvet Limo person, she doesn't seem to remember who she is, but only that she has this comb, which she hands to us at rank 10. She feels like everything she has is borrowed from the Velvet Limo, including the hat. Suspect is hatless! But we make memories with her to get over it. Is this that one place? We came here after eating the steak skewers. The rank 10 is very adorable and kind of made me wish all ranks were voiced. Hey, can we make more? More what? More memories? Oh, I was kind of hoping for the other answer. I can't make any without you. Bruh. Oh, by the way, Chad Yu, how is that Marie doing? She's got a mouth on her, but she's really cute. Yes to both, especially the first. And Risei is very important since her navigation abilities can be broken later in the game. So spending time with her is essential, okay? I, I, I'm not doing a multiple girl ending or anything, it's just to break the gameplay, okay? Huge! We also increased the athlete's rank as well as the nurses, and I was honestly finding it a little overwhelming trying to keep them all happy while at the same time ranking up the party members because they get bonuses in battle. I mean, you even get this scooter event each day to take one of them to a hot spring or the beach where they learn a bonus skill. We have 
have reached that part of the game where there is way too many things to do and not enough time. And now the police are super happy that we, I mean, I mean, they caught that Kubo kid. It is still odd on what his motive was, but they don't care. They can tell their bosses they made the town safe and now can relax. Man, isn't crime scene investigation something? Who would have thought you could get viable prints from Claude? If you keep running your mouth, the sushi's gonna dry up. I'll go for sea urchin. Hey, there's only one of those. Too late. First come, first serve. I thought she really wants what he wants. Well, more fun things. We have a festival where the girls dress up and Teddy tries to fight Yosuke on horniness levels. And it goes on for ages. And this old man is probably thinking, Dang kids, today is always yelling about their love triangles, their talk ticks, and their League of Legends. Epic fail. Risa also gets more time in the spotlight since you have to choose one girl to interact during these story events. And Marie isn't technically in the party, so I picked her. No, seriously, I had to pick her. She wouldn't let me say no! Well, it's finally time for that beach trip with an anime cutscene, and oh dear lord, how dirty is this beach. I'm saying that as someone where this is the norm, yes I know. We get good beaches, expensive video games, and a lot of weird ads. Dude, what is that? What's what? And yep, time for the haha -ha anime moment where Kanji loses his speedo. And oh no, the girls are gonna see. What shall we do? And we continue to enjoy the summer by eating watermelons together, where I should point out that there is an anime of this game, and for some weird reason, there were two Chie's in this scene. So she is an imposter, I knew it! What? And all the while Naoto, who only was hired by the police to help solve the case, is now without a job since they have the killer. So Naoto signs up for school, and we try to befriend him, but they are very standoffish. And for some completely baffling reason, the game just keeps pushing this chill vibe. It's like not ending for any reason. And now the school goes on a trip to Port Island to visit another school. And what the heck, it's the school from Persona 3? Persona Multiverse confirmed this is a joke, okay? Please don't get mad. It's a joke. It's a joke. You dork. Teddy also tags along. I gotta pee. Oh. Whee! And the gang get bored, so out they go to find a club where they invite Naoto along, and possibly the most memorable scene of the whole game. Yes, it's the King's game where even though they asked for no alcohol, uh, I told them to give us soft drinks. They're non alcoholic. They get drunk. Yes, it's drunken karaoke time. Number one victory royale, yeah, what the? And Riso suggests the king's game, which has each person picking up a chopstick and the one with the red mark is the king, while the others are numbered. The king then will say an action and a number, and the person who matches that number has to do that action no matter what. Now Chad Yu, being, well a gamer, has the power to say whatever action he wants and he gets to be the king. So what's the action Chad? What did you pick? Okay that's pretty wild. Which number? Four? Who is that? There's three girls here and I get chosen? Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Ha ha! Yeah! But due to the meat god power's everlasting effect, Chad Yu was able to enter the multiverse and simultaneously and multiversally experience all the options available to him. Yes, the one where Yukiko hugs him, the one where Rise sleeps on him, and the final one. Ow, my hand, Chie! Oh yeah, by the way, that alcohol? It wasn't. Uh, it, it wasn't alcohol. They got drunk on the atmosphere. How did you become so inebriated? This isn't alcohol. <laughs> I feel so good. Good night. As I said, you haven't been drinking alcohol. Are you a pack of imbeciles? Naoto, however, was sneakily trying to get information from us as they tell their backstory of being an ace detective, but they always face criticism from adults because they were still a kid. Sounds tough. Uh, that's it? No punchline? And in return, they want a story from us. And Drunk Yukiko reveals what we do with personas. This is very worrying, but Naoto thinks we are trolling him. Yes. Yeah, 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 trolling! That's what we were doing. Yeah, okay, don't ask any other questions. That's what we were doing. Yep, okay. Now I thought, all right, cover almost blown. Let's ditch Naoto, you know? But no, the gang invite them to the ramen shop the next day. How dumb are you? Eat the noodles hard. Seriously, why are you still here? I don't know how to count. Oh. And so Teddy just talks about the TV world with two people standing there. And I realize I got to stop nitpicking a game where you got a talking teddy bear and a celebrity hanging out with 
with commoners. It just doesn't happen in real life. Anyway, back home. Now to admits that yes, I know your whole gang is involved with this. You somehow saved Yukiko, Kanji, and Risei, and this teacher was the only victim to be beaten to death. The other murders still have no cause of death. It doesn't add up and something has to be done. And done they shall, as Naoto willingly goes on TV in an interview to alert the killer, and the next rainy night gets captured and the shadow appears on the Midnight Channel. Which proves that Kubo ain't the killer, and why this game's got a long way to go. Also on a side note, the gang talks about society clowns. As Yukiko mentions how everyone in town is acting weird. Like the people are only asking about each other's feelings, not worrying about themselves, which I did notice while wandering around. Marie also has another poem. Think you got me? Well that's too bad. Cause I ain't stupid enough to get had. Oh my god, that was insane. So in Naoto's dungeon, which has so much backtracking, we reach the shadow and beat it, where it's revealed that Naoto is a girl and was pretending to be a guy in order to avoid any more criticism by the male-dominated police force. Kanji, though, at this news was like, You're a girl. Yes. So we go back home and Adachi is here, very drunk. Come on, take a seat. Oh, what a lovable cloud. <laughs> and we get his rank 6 social link, which always was kind of weird to me, that you just hangs around with a police officer, but it's cool. It's Adachi. Uh -huh. Adachi? And the game also had this weird glitch where it would say I could talk to people like Yukiko, but she's not there at all. Only... Adachi. Hi there. Well, Naoto is safe and sound, but I was so annoyed that it takes ages to start a social link. You need max courage and knowledge and have to talk to the shady man. Like, why, game? She's a main party member. I need to buff her up before the final fight. But it's great that she's on the group because she's a detective and honestly, this whole group are idiots. They so need someone like her. Since I'm the king of the geniuses. So Naoto says what happened on the night of the kidnapping. Our man knocked on the door, but no one was there. But then someone and grabbed her from behind with chloroform and stuffing them into a sack and within minutes they were chucked into the TV. Isn't it kind of sad for an ace detective to go down that easily? Jeez Yosuke, what's your problem? And also they discuss how Kubo is probably a copycat killer where they only killed the teacher and tried to get famous by saying they did the other ones. Hence it was inconsistent with the other cases. The killer only targets people who appear on TV. Anything happen? No. Rather, I'd like to have a doctor examine Oh my, examine these Teddy. curtains are very green. And having modestly sized breasts like yours would definitely make it easier to wear a kimono. Jeez, what age rating was this game? Eh, uh, fair enough. Sex? I also absolutely went insane around here, trying to max my damn expression just to progress Nanako's link, while Dojima's is more delving into his wife's murder. Curse you random stats in life, let me say it! Well, time for more social events where the gang have to play in a band for the Junes Festival, otherwise Yosuke's dad will get fired forcing him to move schools. But what instrument shall we play? Oh wait! I accidentally bought a bass once. Jeez, how rich is this kid to accidentally buy a $200 bass? Well, they pick the instruments and realize, oh wait, we can't learn this in one weekend. We can't even get them to make a sound. Is this thing broken? I'm blowing. Yikes. I did it, I did it. Oh man, this is so relatable as someone who played the saxophone in high school. In fact, uh, I should still have it around here somewhere. Thick climax. Teddy also wanted to try a drum solo, but we're doing it exactly like we practiced. Yosuke said calmly. Exactly like we practiced. So on the day we are waiting to perform and uh, this janitor just moves and coughs a little and Yosuke is like, huh. And that's so important of a weird detail to mention, so you better believe I'm paying attention. When I say we are, you say, who's ready? No one asked. So we play and actually sound good. I mean, wow, it's true what they say. When you sing, you really do sound like a different person. Even Chie as well. What? The janitor though is in the crowd and then walks away. I saw that guy before. Okay, who the heck is this dude? Yosuke's dad or something? And to distract the crowd who really want an encore. But the gang can't do that because they only learned one song. Teddy? <laughs> Anyway, later we invite Marie to our room. I'm gonna find out everything about you. Oh god. I hope not everything. And even more exams, meaning more group study. Could you, uh, lend me a hand too? Um, I wouldn't know where to begin with second year's subjects. Ah, uh, what's up with that? 
Useless after all. Holy moly, Yosuke. Seriously, why is it like every month you just have to say something so random and out of character? The hell with the exams. It's time for my animal crackers. Oh, can I have some too? I want to find the penguin. Hands off the penguin. It's mine. And I guess the game is nice and chill now. But we can finally relax and laugh and oh, what now? Well, this dude talks about saving everyone. And Chad Yu receives a note in the mail which says, Nanako as Ligma? What oh no, not Ligma! No one asked. Song of the Fallen Angel. The Fallen Angel is chained down. Society clowns. So Persona 4 Golden is interesting because if you read the description, it says A coming of age story that sets the protagonist and his friends on a journey kickstarted by a chain of serial murders. But then halfway through the game you have this. So this school, which seems real dodgy, has a beauty pageant and if you write someone's name on the sign up, they have to enter no matter what. It's like that Spongebob episode where Sandy writes his name down and he freaks out, dude just reach in and grab the paper Also, how do pencils work underwater? Anyway, Yosuke writes the girls names down, but the boys also have a cross dressing pageant and oh, checking right. the names on the board. <laughs> Man, what idiots would want to be in this thing? Let's see, Yosuke Hanamura... ME! Karma. And he goes, why did you sign us up for this, GA? She's like, well, you made us enter the beauty pageant, so it's fair. And he's like, that's beside the point. You really might be one of my least favorite main characters in a video game yet. Oh yeah? So the school festival begins, we have awkward group dates. This is kind of depressing. We meet our social links. And get the pageant where Teddy wins. And for some reason, he gets to decide that the girl should have a swimsuit competition. <laughs> And the school is okay with this. And Kanji goes, whoa, Yukiko looks so good in that. And I'm like, did you forget you both went to the beach? Oh, when will this nightmare end? So Dojima arrives to drop Nanako off with us. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> what kind of joke is this? And they all go to Yukiko's Amaki in Hot Spring, where you know it's anime. Check out my dead man! We, however, walk in due to Yukiko mixing up the times, and they... So we give the order to retreat. But since we have a mouth and cannot speak, Teddy retreat! says it for us. Someday our character will say a single line of the story. So more arrestable things happen. Holy crap! D don't touch me! And now begins the winter months. It's cold today. We're on TV. There's a news report of a politician asking kids what they think about of this ever-present fog. As some people are worried it might be toxic. And Nanako says that she was in that interview. Huh, so she appeared on TV. I'm sure nothing bad will happen, right? It's going to be winter soon. No, don't say that. That's a death flag. No. Well, anyway, social link time, where we see our soccer buddy Daisuke getting cucked in 4K. And we get to spend more time with our family. Just kidding. As Naoto joined the party, and for some stupid reason to even talk to a party member, we need high knowledge stats to even start the link. So, okay, I study every night and get the rank. And the next day, it's raining. So he's not there. All right, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, today begins the non-stop story segments for a while where I don't get any free time. Great. And during this we get a letter saying for us to stop investigating or someone close to us will be killed. However, Dojima sees this and freaks out because this is clearly related to the murders. You're involved in the case, aren't you? What are you up to? So you're not going to be honest with me. So he drags us to the police station for questioning, and we try to tell him that someone is throwing people into the TVs. Persona. He makes us stay the night there, mad we don't trust him to tell the truth. But best bro Adachi says, don't worry, he's just being a caring father. And so we wait. And wait. Damn, I don't know why the fandom calls him Chad Yu. He ain't like his usual self. Look at him, just sitting there, permanently hunching his spine. So we see Teddy and Yosuke working at June's. How they call Nanako and she says we're in the station due to a letter, which freaks Yosuke out, making him call everyone since it could be about the murders. Meanwhile, we see it's midnight and check the TV in our room, and what? Nanako is on TV? Dojima took away our phone so we can't tell anyone. And we hear this voice. Poor thing. 
I'll put you at ease soon. However, Naoto the detective also watched the channel and alerts the others, saying that it was because Nanako appeared on TV recently. And they all barge into our room, telling Dojima that his daughter has been kidnapped. Dojima frantically calls the other police to organize a search party as we ponder. Nanako wouldn't open the door to strangers. The only one Nanako-chan might know would be me, his partner. Don't be silly, Adachi. It couldn't have been you. I mean, you were here the whole time. Naoto says it could be a delivery driver. Everyone answers the door for them. And wait, Dojima was investigating one of them. Taro Namatame, the ex-councilman who was fired for having an affair with the reporter Yamano, the first victim. He now works as a driver, and I mean, a truck is big enough to have a TV where he can chuck people in. And no one is suspicious about the Amazon delivery driver, right? So Adachi tells the Dojima of this, and he gives chase. But due to anime driving, they crash, and we arrive to see Dojima badly injured, while Namatame took Nanako into the TV's truck. Naoto also finds his diary, which he says he kidnapped people to save them by chucking them into the TV. I guess he was just super twisted and messed up. So Dojima begs us to save Nanako, and we vow to do that. Just after we talk to Naoto. Look, I spent a lot of time trying to start this link, and if I'm gonna use her in the party, I need to level her up! Oh, the school is closed, so I can't see her. Epic fail. So into the TV world we go. Look at this thick dog. And we fight our way through this dungeon called Heaven, and it's fairly straightforward until we find Namatame holding Nanako hostage, still raving about how he wants to save her, as a shadow appears from him called Kumino Sagiri, which attacks the group, giving us the old Peace, man. And this special move is to convert our allies to attack us, but I love how our rank 10 social links with Chie and Yukiko stop them from fighting us. So the group win and bring them both back, taking them to the hospital while Namatame is under police guard. And all the while we can just wait for them to recover. So that's it, right? No more Nanako story, no more murders, we caught the killer, Lately, we are finally alone. alone. Oh yeah. In that case. I don't have the courage to talk to Naoto. Are you kidding me? And so begins the day's waiting, which means social links. Eventually talking to Naoto about a phantom thief. Bazinga. Ranking up Rise to almost girlfriend status, because she really wants me to. And also I, because I need to get Chad Yu back into the groove of being an actual Chad, you know. I barely have seen him do anything like that all game. And the group seem happy now that finally the murders are over. But weirdly, the fog's coming in. But the team go to visit Nanako in the hospital to learn why she's sick. I'm afraid Nanako has Ligma. Ligma? What the hell is Ligma? It stands for Life in Great Misfortune. Alright. Huh? Yes, it's quite a serious health condition and there's no known cure. What, really? Yes, well, it's better than getting the other disease that's been going around. Desus Nutus. I hate this healthcare system. So we wait as the fog starts to get worse and panic creeps in as random NPCs fall sick. Some saying it's the end of the world. And even when you walk around at night, the music is all like... And anything you do now in the social links, the fog is always there, ever present. Well, good news, at rank 8, Rise is our girlfriend. Eh, uh, she started crying and I felt sorry for her. And even though Marie is already our GF, as the kids say these days, YOLO. You only love oranges. Well, more exams, cause that's pretty much school in a nutshell. But still with the meat god powers, I know all the answers, so I speed ran to the tests and... Ah. Uh... Yes? I wonder how dramatic the story will be. I pissed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so the group discuss how the police seem to have a hard time pinning Namatame to the murders. I mean, he was in a different city when the reporter was killed. But then Adachi suddenly calls, saying Nanako's condition has worsened. And we rush to the hospital and hold her head as she dies. Wait, really? No. Wait, I, I didn't sign up for this. This breaks everyone down as we all look to find Namatame's yeah, room. Hold on. Cough it up! Where's this room? And we see the guard blocking his room drag Dojima away from there as he went to kill Namatame. And when we enter, uh, Yosuke convinces everyone to chuck Namatame into the TV to kill him. I don't think any of us expected him to say that. We see a shadow manifestation of him appear on the Midnight Channel, gloating about his actions. And it's a very tense situation and I pick this and they chuck him into the TV, killing him. And then the game skips all the way to March where the town is still in fog as we leave for home with this sad music playing. Did, did, did I just get a bad ending? So I have to play the whole game again? Yoo-hoo. 
Oh yeah, I can turn back time with this power. Well, here you have to defuse the situation by answering these seven choices correctly in a row. And I swear, I don't know how people did this without a guide. You better believe I'm using one. If this game had a faster skip text option, like our Lord and Savior, Steins Gate the visual novel, I would have tried them all out, but it takes so long to get back to this point. Actually, let me know if any of you did this without a guide back in the day. I'm sure after one mistake, you looked up a guide. So Chad Yu convinces them with no words, something doesn't feel right. And the next day we speak to Namatame willing to listen to his stories, since the police don't believe the TV stuff. And he says how in the other town the night of Yamano's murder, he saw her on the Midnight Channel, and was able to put his hand through the TV, getting the same power as us. And the next day when he heard that she was killed, he thought that she was asking for help on the Midnight Channel the night before. So when he saw Saki on TV, he rushed to tell the danger but she didn't listen wasn't able to save her. And then when he saw Yukiko on TV, he interpreted this as being her in that world was a safe place. So he kidnapped her and chucked her in to keep her safe from the true serial killer. He only recently learned how unsafe the place was when he jumped in himself. He kept thinking what he was doing was right. And without his knowledge, we were saving people and they were fine after all. That's why he checked up on us as the janitor as that concert to see that the people he kidnapped were truly safe. So Naoto says that the culprit is the one who threw Yamano and Saki in the first place. And that Namatame shadow we saw on TV, that wasn't his evil thoughts, but rather a reflection of what the team thought they were. Don't worry, this will be explained in the end. So this also means the killer is the one who sent us the letter, someone who knew our address. And Teddy, he goes oh. missing, sad he couldn't save Nanako, and through some anime magic, Nanako is revived, while Teddy goes missing on the other side. Look, I don't know, I legit thought Teddy sacrificed himself for her, but I don't think that's what happened now looking back. She legit just comes back to life for no reason. And to think the gang were gonna kill a man over this. Oh, this is so confusing. So yes, Nanako is alive and Adachi is happy the family will be together and... Well, enjoy your freedom while you can. Hey, thanks. Wait, why did you say that? So we meet Ego in the velvet car. If we continue driving blindly... Ah! And at the food shop, we can say who we think the killer is. The one who killed the first two, who sent the letter, knowing our address, and wouldn't be suspicious walking up to our house. And it has become increasingly obvious, I can deny it no longer, the culprit is... Nanako! Big bro, are you there? Oh, welcome back! No, wait. A minute, she's the main victim. And she's still in hospital! Then, um, it's, uh, Chie. Yes, because I knew it was not the real Chie ever since her voice sounded different. And she tricked me into saying she likes mint ice cream. No one apart from me loves that crap. Oh, hey, Adachi. Oh. Oh no, it's Adachi. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Yes, as a policeman and a friend of Dojima, only he could deliver those letters. But, no. It can't be true. Not a dachi. He's been such a good friend and he wouldn't hurt a fly. No, I I mustn't. I I won't tell everyone it's him. And so the game skips over to March, and before our departure back home, we visit Adachi and ask him, hey, did you do it? He says no, and we're like, bro, come on, we are your friends, we're on your side, don't worry. He goes, what the hell, and brings in the letter as evidence that he conveniently forgot to give to the forensic team to examine its handwriting. He gives us a light and says, if you are my friend, you will burn this evidence. You actually did it! Do you understand what you just did? You destroyed evidence. That's a crime, you know? <laughs> I'm starting to think that I made another mistake here. Ugh, fine, rewind time. <laughs> so yes, the gang will agree, it's him. As he was there at both crime scenes, guarding Yamano from the reporters during her scandal at the end, and questioning Saki on her discovery of the body. So we rush to the hospital to confront him, and he's like, Ah, uh, I don't really remember. Someone else killed them. Adachi-san, do you have any idea who that might be? I have no idea what you're talking about. Cause we think it might have been you. What? That's ridiculous! We already know Namatami's the one who put them all in! 
What did you just say? Oh, he slipped up. Arrest him! And he runs into the TV, into the other world where we have to go and take him down for the final fight, which is very funny if you check where we are in the video. <laughs> and Teddy returns. Uh. I kind of don't care about this plot. He's like, I'm not human. We are like, you're an idiot. You're a human. Stop being a baby. Really reminds me of another mascot. <laughs> so it's his turn to find Adachi. Do smell Adachi baby in here. Why would you call him a baby? I don't get it. Well, the gang decide to take Adachi down for good and end this nightmare. I pissed my pants. Okay, moving on. Turns out he's in that room we first went with Yosuke's bladder explosion. Bladder? And Adachi reveals it all. How he was transferred here to this town but found it so boring. However, while arguing with the Amino, he discovered that he could push people into the TV. And was thrilled with how she died there. It changed his boring life. He then deliberately pushed Saki in when she refused his advances. Yeah, Dachi has a thing against women. Always getting called out on the carpet by these stuck-up bitches. He then manipulated a Namatame who called the police to report that the TV was showing people before they died and couldn't believe his luck as he was the one who got to answer. So he told Namatame, Hey, you know, buddy, how about you save them yourself? Maybe chuck them into the TV. That might be the safest place for them. Adachi was also the one who threw Kubo in because his confession saying that he was the killer ruined Namatame's plan. As this was all fun for Adachi, because Namatame would save people by chucking them in, then they would have to be saved by us and this cycle would just keep repeating itself. And so he leaves to his dungeon while the gang all agree to ready up for the next day. However, if you had a high social link with him, you can come back and visit him one on one. You're right. Hey, hey he's kind of crazy. So the next day we go through the dungeon. Don't let it get away. Hey, it ran away! Where Rise was really making me regret Robert to her. Alright, level up! I then fused more personas, actually getting into it more since I sort of understand now, compared to me in Persona 5, sticking with the starting persona because I felt attached to them. And we reach Adachi where he says how the fog in our world is from this one seeping in. And it's because humans want the fog to show them what they want and not find the truth. That it would be easier to not struggle in life if we all just became shadows. We say. Nobody and fight. Interestingly, he summons his own persona, Magatsu Izanagi, similar to our one, but we are able to defeat him. Yet, you know, of course there's more. He gathers shadows like Namatame and a new voice speaks out, Amino Sagiri, who says he's the god that grants mankind's desires and that enveloping the town in fog is what mankind wants. However, it didn't foresee mankind summoning personas and curious at this revelation, challenges us. Bad move, eyeball, as we fight, my favorite song in the whole game, and once we win, it's like, like, wow, you guys are strong. And dies. Now free, Adachi says to let him die. We refuse and take him to the real world for his punishment. And now we see that the fog has lifted. Murderer caught. And case closed. And you know what this means? Free time events where we have a whole month of December since I did it on the first day available. And hey, what the fudge? It skipped all the way to Christmas. I always do dungeons as soon as possible. But apparently, you meant to not do that here. Why? Was it told to us? All those wasted social link days. And because of this, it skipped part of the game for me. Yeah, you're meant to get a choice to ask someone out to your place for Christmas or hang out with the boys. But I got no choice. Because apparently Marie doesn't even appear in any of these social events, even though she's Chad's girlfriend. And Rise was only ranked eight at the time. And no choice to even hang out with the guys too. So yeah, I just assume Chad spent his Christmas lying in bed all alone. Seriously, when you play this game, just avoid the dungeon for a while. I'm still salty about this, I don't want to be alone on Christmas. Anyway, it's Christmas Day and the gang want to have a party for Nanako. She's such an amazing girl. <laughs> Maybe it was the best we didn't meet. And so we have a cake, and I will admit I was still salty, so I was half skipping through these scenes. Something about a poison cake, I don't know. Anyway, it's New Year's Day, and we get a text to go to the shrine. And of course, Marie isn't an option, probably because she doesn't have a phone. So Rise calls, and I accept. Sorry to keep you waiting. So, uh, how was your Christmas? Nuts. I'm going to wish that both of us are happy forever. Yeah. I'm dating Marie, by the way. You're thinking of something naughty right now. Raise your hand. 
Huh? No sex? So the next day we go around to greet friends, and if you want the true golden ending, you have to go to the Velvet Room. Marie is gone, having left this world for some reason, and Margaret asks if you wanted to look for the scene girl, and you legit can say no, but it will then end like the original game. I swear if you made one mistake and didn't always save, I don't know how you would manage to see everything in this game. So we get a cold and have weird dreams of Marie, not the ones I wanted to see. I came. Where she says that meeting us was the happiest time of her life, but she left to not hurt us. And Margaret says that she's in a dungeon deep in the TV world, and if we want to go in and save her, she needs time to find the right location. Well, that means we get some more socializing, as Teddy stays over with us. I swear, you better not walk in my room when I'm watching my shows. And if you already evolved someone's persona to their second form, you can go again for the third one, which I did with Yukiko, Naoto, and Chie. Then there was some more Teddy stuff, what the hell are you two doing? And I ranked up Nanako's social link, which was funny because there's a scene when Nanako runs away, and I'm like, yeah, she's never doing that after what happened in the story. And finally, yes, rank Ted with Arise, which means... I am currently in Senpai's room. Yeah, you would have been here soon if you didn't ignore me on Christmas. I love you. And Risei's upgraded ability tells you all the enemy's weaknesses. Yeah, that's why I dated her. And during all this, I'm speedrunning trying to get I to rank 10, but I missed out by one freaking day. If I had those weeks in December, it would all have been great, but yeah, gee thanks, game, I'm still not mad at this. And so in February, the group go on a ski holiday. No beef? Or pork? Or even chicken? And the gang all tell ghost stories. Over three years ago, a friend of mine in middle school told me this. I pissed my pants! <laughs> but they hear something go bump and the lights turn off. And it's Teddy. Why do we like him again? Let's finish him off. I'm sorry, Teddy. Only people have human rights. And the next day we get to pick one person to spend time skiing with. And I had enough of Little Miss Crazy. So pick oh, the boys. Yeah. And they get stranded in a blizzard, seeking shelter in this creepy cabin. The phones are dead. If you told me we were gonna get lost, I'd have remembered to bring it! I'm all naked in here! And the gang see something flash on the TV in the room, but the girls barge in. Hey! Wh what do you guys think you're doing? Senpai, no! Don't leave me! You're still dressed. What are you doing here? Wait, what about our clothes? Why wouldn't they be dressed? Ugh. Do I really have to spell it out? What were the four of you doing shoving each other around in here? Oh, uh, is this one of those male bonding things or something? Oh yeah? And it turns out the TV shows the Midnight Channel as Margaret reaches through to grab the gang into the hollow forest where Marie is hiding. A final, last, dungeon. Probably. So this place was created by Marie's mind, as she regained her memories during getting ranked 10 with us, among other things with her. Margaret says how Marie was created as sort of like a shadow thing like Teddy, and she came here willingly. Whatever memory she regained made her run away, and if we don't save Marie, this place will fade away with her. So of course I will venture the hardest dungeon for best girl. And I'm not joking, this dungeon is tough, where you don't get any of your items, weapons, you start over, and each fight lowers your SP by half. So yeah, I did avoid as many encounters as I could. And halfway through we find Marie, who is wearing something not goth related. I am the lizard queen! Marie, we came to save you! Shut up! Marie says she has to die because she realized she's Kasumi no Kami, a fog spirit like the other two we met, and how they learnt mankind's desires from Adachi and Namatame. She learned from us, and that's why she's avoiding us and says the world is doomed if she doesn't die here. So we chase her to the end where she says how the fog needed all three of them to turn everything into shadows. But with the two dead, the fog isn't needed, it's just sitting inside her. And if she dies, she can get rid of it and save humanity. We are like, no, lol. You're our friend. We will save you. Just release the fog and we will fight it. Friends. And we fight the fog, which the plan works, and Marie is saved. Get, get off of me! You think that's long enough for a moving hug? Shouldn't you let go now? Nope. I'm tired of moving. Enough with getting up. Good thing there's someone even I can hug. Hey! Here we go again. And the dungeon collapses as we escape back to the snow in the real world. Marie thanks us and joins the snowball fight. I'm supposed to throw snow at him. Isn't that right? 
Okay, I will bury him. So yes, the GF is saved. There's some awkward hot spring scene again, just for some reband service, which I found very, very odd. And the next day is Valentine's. What already? And we get the usual text, but uh, uh, me still being naive. I thought the game would do something with Marie. Like in Persona 5, you decline the first text, but then the text from the next person comes through. So I decline Risei to get Marie's text, but it never came. I guess she really doesn't have a phone. So that means I went into the end, all that effort, Declining Risei, nothing with I, and zero from Marie. You gotta feel for Chad right now. So Valentine's in Japan is where girls give chocolate to people they like, and Risei gives some to us, but is very sad we turned down her date. And just as we head home, feeling alone and depressed, we save the world, but there's no one there for us. Out of nowhere. Marie? Marie? I'm so happy! You really are an oddball. Oddball. So she gives us the chocolate she made, which is still moving, but somehow it actually tastes really good. Nothing like the poison we got the whole game from the others. Close your eyes. Shut up and close them. Thank you. Well, I don't really get it, but it looks like I don't just like you. I want to be with you forever and ever. I love you. I love you so much. It was all worth it in the end. And so it's the final day of our year-long trip in Inaba. Yes, we have to head back home, never to see the gang again. Our adventure ending. So we go to say bye-bye to each of the group, and I swear, yes, I learned my lesson. I had a guide up. Because as you see, if you want the true ending, you have to do specific things. Like head to Junes where there's no reason to. The gang all meet up and discuss plot points not resolved. Like how did the Midnight Channel rumor even start? And how come Adachi and Namata Tame got the TV power without awakening a persona like we did. And we get a letter from Adachi in prison. You're a dumbass. Where he also thought the same as us. And mentions how he only got the power after arriving in town. He can't remember who told him about the channel, but wants us to find the answers. I guess he's a model prisoner now, huh? So from this, there might be something more. A conductor behind the scenes of the whole event of last year. Now to says for us to retrace our steps. Remember our first day. And so we ask around town while also making sure we head to the Velvet Room to get this orb from Igor. While Marie says she had another half that split from her, this being is the one orchestrating everything. I seriously don't know how anyone would do this without a guide. Anyway, we find Anako who says, hey, big bro, remember when you got sick, when you arrived after you shook the gas attendant's hand? Wait, the gas attendant? They were behind it all? For real? That means if Dojima ran them over at the start, none of this would have happened. Ah, uh, hey, meat god, is it too late to rewind time? Yeah, you never finished the beatball challenge, and if you did, you could have, but you didn't, so no. Damn. Well, we meet the attendant and ask them about Adachi, Namatame, and all that. And she says, yes, we gave them their power, but we're surprised we came after them. They reveal themselves as Izanami, a goddess, and if they want to fight her, the gang will have to go through another dungeon. Bro, this game just doesn't want to end. So we tell the group and head into the TV to explore one last dungeon, which looks very similar to that dream we had when we first got here. And while we go through the dungeon, they say this is all an experiment, with Namatame being despair, Adachi has emptiness, and we as hope, each given a fragment to monitor them, which was those gas gods. But because Adachi impacted the town the most, Izanami assumed humans wanted emptiness and told the fog to spread everywhere. By the way, this is told in those bits when you reach a new level in unvoiced dialogue in the dungeon, so don't skip it like I did. And so the gang find them as Naoto asks about the Midnight Channel, which Izanami says was the town's desire to see more of the people they were thinking about, and it granted that desire. So whatever caught the public's attention, it reflects on TV. It wasn't actually forecasting who would die. So how like we thought Namatame was evil, we saw it reflected on TV that night. Well, time to take this god down and stop her experimenting as she transforms into a beast we can't lower any more health. But you remembers Igor's magic words. Thick climax. And uses the orb removing the fog, revealing her true form. Oh, ew, no, what the hell? Oh, that's pretty creepy. Hey, just wanted to drop by and see if you wanted help. You're on your own, pal. And so we fight with the weirdest song for a final boss ever, as the tree parts where nothing plays. And even though we seem to win, she uses a move to insta kill, but our gang sacrificed themselves before we die. And in the afterlife, we remember our team's and friends' words, all telling us to get up and fight. Also, Adachi. You're a dumbass.
And we evolve Izanagi into Izanagi no Akami, which is a broken persona. And we yeet out of there and now can withstand every hit. And so Chad Yu finally lives up to his name using myriad truths to defeat Izanami. Well done. Well, it's done and back to the velvet car where Igor, my heart danced with delight to see you coming Leaving and home. thus the journey ends we leave no to go worries. home as our friends send us off in a teary <laughs> goodbye oh come on don't cry and yeah persona 4 golden was so fun that's something i first watched an anime of because i didn't have a vita to then watching two different let's plays actually finally playing it myself it's a unique experience there are so many things i like about it over five especially how the group meshed together and i can't help but wonder how much more i would have loved this game if i played it completely blind but it's really hard to not know who the killer is beforehand. I mean, it's very present in all the marketing for the other games. So yes, we beat it. And I want to thank all my patrons for supporting what I do. If you would like to join them, there's a link in the description where you get your names here and access to high quality thumbnail art. But yes, Chad Yu's journey is over. Till he has to fight again or dance. I don't know. He always has something new to do, it seems. And even in this game, it's not over. As months later, he returns for summer vacation. Yeah, it's not like he can never come back here. Where he sees all the gang with new designs and Marie as the weather girl. Thanks, Mariko. Tell our viewers goodbye. Uh, yeah, yeah. But before that, a personal message. I'm doing just fine. Love you. What? This is amazing, Marie. You're amazing. Uh, you made this game worth that? it. I am the steak. And without a big cheesy thanks to Commitimus Crime, Cox or Sin, John Porter Gill, Master Pro, Worker B, and my other patrons for helping support these videos. And so to end, I will now say this game was made around 2009 to 2012. And with that fact, I know now what the most popular catchphrase was at the time. Sheesh. 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 Trojan. Ramses. Magnum. Sheesh.